Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Trex, and welcome back to DC Universe Online, where I am the number A DCO streamer, DCO YouTuber, and probably a decent guy. But it all depends on who you ask. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me this morning and afternoon where I had my little cousin Aurora, RC Blue, for all those who know her at CCF. Uh, we, uh, she job shadowed me today and I showed her a bunch of stuff streaming and also some editing. So it actually worked out really well. So hopefully she, she does not get an F on her report. Crossing fingers. Crossing fingers. So uh, we have a lot of cool information coming in today. <laughs> There's a reason why we don't. Well, we don't do uh, the emojis here. <laughs> hi, Aaron. Hi, Jet. Hey, Catmon. Hey, Machete. Hey, Jacob. Hey, Raph. Hello, Crashbot. Hello, Voxer. Hello, Neutron. Hello, Connor. And that's everybody. Except for the lurkers who are here. I know you're here, lurkers. You can say hi. I do bite. Now she needs to shadow Carlin. Oh, my God. I'm pretty sure she'll have much more fun shadowing Carlin because Carlin plays with animals all day. She just all just does it all day. Nick Marvel, how's it going? Okay, Marvel DC. I got you. <laughs> uh, so tonight we are going to get a little bit of gameplay in because, you know, it's DC Universe Online. It's a Friday night. We want to get some games in. Oh, oh sorry, Raph. Uh, and... But first, we have to talk about some amazing news that happened this uh, this weekend or this morning slash afternoon. Actually, it happened this afternoon while I was playing Naruto and getting laughed at by my cousin as she hit me and laughed at me and laughed at me and laughed at me. My spirit was broken. But we are going to talk about the awesomeness. That is the DCUO teases Atlanteans and Superman's 80th anniversary. I don't think we did anything for the 75th. Who cares? That was like five years ago, right? <laughs> Who cares? Who's counting? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody's counting. So let's first off go right off the rip, okay? Let's, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go slow with this. Uh, Aaron, by the way, you definitely did miss some Naruto this afternoon, so. I, I tried. I tried. So first up, isn't that a great picture? By the way, if anyone can tell me who this chick is, I will be grateful. Who is that? Because I don't know. Uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, I, that's from last year. Yeah, I wasn't reading comics last year. She well, she's not hot. She's she's well. Wait, hold on. Nope, I wasn't gonna go there. Nope, not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. <laughs> I didn't. No, I didn't. You didn't get a notification. <laughs> oh. Okay. You know what? I did not send a tweet, Aaron. Hmm. I did not send a tweet. You are right. But it's all Catmon's fault. All right, so first up, new episode, Deluge. Can we not come up with a different name? Now, for the record, Deluge is, if you look it up on the Webster Dictionary, it's a flood or a great flood or other words that I don't remember from that definition because all I remember was flood. Now, here uh, in Deluge, uh, Mira, the Queen of the Seas, uh, has joined the surface dwellers in investigating the return of Starro, a gigantic intergalactic starfish, ch chocolate starfish, uh, with the incredible powers of over the mind with little conscious purpose. What drew Starro to Earth in the first place? Who is really behind the attack? And what does it have to do with the oceans and her home, Atlantis? No, seriously, I'm actually asking these questions. I don't know what's going on right now. Doug, wow, Decrat, De Jacob. I'm gonna time his ass out. 
<laughs> Send you the pick. It's on. It's in the forums, and it's actually it's from Aquaman Volume Eight, Number Thirty One. If that help you, if that helps. Uh, okay, so. Uh, so okay, so this investigation will lead Mira and the bravest heroes and villains back to Central City to investigate. Then deep beneath the sea, in their uh, to their first real glimpse into the underwater world of the Atlant of the Atlanteans, and to the conflicts lurking in a divided kingdom. All right, so SJ, thank you, SJ. SJ's take because this was really needed uh, for you, comic readers, not me. Uh, Deluge should ring a bell. It doesn't. They're a small, they're a small but dangerous group of Atlantean insurgents that have been lurking behind the surface for years. Their goal to sow seeds of doubt in the minds of surface dwellers and Atlanteans both, and to take the Atlantean throne. So with the Deluge, uh, that's where the title comes from. We have to. I'm guessing it seems that we're going to have to stop these band of Atlantean peoples. We want to just cause nothing but mayhem and destruction, and they want they want the crown and the throne. All right. So points of notice, things to know about the luge. It will be a large scale episode and event with level agnostic event versions of content available for a limited time. AKA, look at episode thirty. No, no, look at episode thirty. Look at it. All right. No, no, don't just look at it. Look at it like it's. It's that friend you haven't seen in years who had a, had a bit of a problem back in the day. You know, maybe drugs or something or alcohol. And he went to rehab. He got himself fixed, but he relapsed. But then he got, he got himself back on track. And years later, he, you finally see him. And he looks good. And you feel proud. Yeah, look at episode 30 like that. Look at it. That structure is what we're going to see in episode 31, Deluge. So we're going to have event versions. We're going to have the regular versions. And we're also going to have elite versions of content. And the open world will be open to everyone. Everyone. So uh, so next, uh, the episode will feature new and returning Atlantean heroes and villains. Aquaman, Mira, Black Manta, Coram uh, Wrath, who? And more. The blonde girl's name is Dolphin. Her name is Dolphin. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah. Ah. The storyline will include a variety of single-player and multiplayer adventures set in Central City and in an all-new spin-drift station in Atlantean outpost deep beneath the sea. <laughs> under the sea, under the sea. Under the sea, under the sea. Yeah, that thing is gonna that's gonna be playing the entire time. Uh, <laughs> uh so and then the episode will launch uh new player rewards, including new gear styles, base items, and feats. Uh and then here's the kicker. In addition to new rewards and content, Deluge will include update and permanent will include uh, will include updated and permanent the con my god his math or I'm sorry his English I swear and make permanent the content okay I want to make sure I read this right Deluge will include update and make permanent the content and rewards from the previous Star of the Conqueror event so episode 31 Deluge will, mar will launch in March on PC PlayStation 4 and Xbox One not PlayStation 3. Sorry, guys. How to get that out. So this last line, talking about the Star of the Conqueror event. We all remember that it was last year. Okay, We had this thing last year. Uh, and I want to make sure I'm actually looking at my reading right. Okay. So uh, this thing is going to be coming out. Uh, we had a star event last year, and it was a major event. It was pretty awesome, pretty cool. With the star event, it was it was something interesting. We had we had the raid that was the event raid, which gave us like an, an actual our first uh, well outside of the continental collapse and anniversary, but we had another event raid. So the star content in the central city will be coming back. The raid 
the raids, and I think there might have been an alert and a duo, all that will be coming back as well. And just like in episode 34, we're going to have an event version, we're going to have the regular versions, and we're also going to have the elite versions. Now, would this mean that we have... Uh, <laughs> I just got a gift from Arwen. Oh, poor Arwen. <laughs> oh, bless her soul. All right, so with that, we're going to have all that open world content back. Maybe even, I think the bounty will be coming back too, guys. We're going to get the bounty back. Uh, so, and further along in that in that thread, Meps has also stated uh, that the major events tab that's in the feet section will be going away. Those feats in the major events section, the star event, those feats will be added to episode 31 when it launches. So all of us on test server will definitely probably need to take a strong look and compare to make sure all the feats transferred properly. Uh, Desert Recycling content, even though PS3 is gone, smack my head, I'm canceling my sub, said forums people. Yeah, fuck the forums. So, DL, the uh, episode thirty one will have. Am I? I'm not really sure. Like, what the percentage is? If it's like a fifty of Starro, fifty of the new stuff. Not sure. We're just gonna have to wait and find out in that uh, in that aspect when it hits his test server later this month. So, I am super psyched about it because the Starro event, Starro the Conqueror content is coming back. It's getting updated. It's getting updated to our to the current CR. It's now going to be part of an episode, meaning that it's going to be what? Stain content. It's going to be permanent content. Yes. It's going to be permanent. And it's also going to still have the items from last year as well. Now, here's the kicker, though. Last year in the Star event, we have that star stuff. We have that star gear. That gear is going to be, as far as I can assume here, it's going to be updated to current CR status. Now, whether or not that is going to be the quote-unquote purple gear that you can buy from the vendor, that you can, and if it will drop from content, that's something to consider. And then episode 31 will have its new vendor gear, and that's going to be there. So that's how I think it's going to work out. The purple gear is going to be the Star O event gear from last year. If anyone remembers the name of them, I can't. I don't remember the name off the top of my head because I didn't get them. Ha <laughs> ha! I didn't want them. Oh, uh, poor Raph. Poor Raph. Uh, now here's the now the biggest question that of course we had a few people in the forums ask about in that thread was the OP items. Are the OP items going to come back to the R&D system? Can we craft them? Or even better, are the OP items we still have from Starro, will they be automatically increased when this episode launches? I'll answer one at a time. Items coming from the R&D vendor, from the R&D station? Yes, please. Bring that back. Oh, my God. Yes, 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 yes. Bring the OP items back onto the vent, onto the R and D. Make me craft it. It was amazing. Even better, I already have the plans. I don't need to rebuy them. Just let me buy this. Let this stuff drop from the instances. Let that drop from content. Let that drop from all over the place. And let me make my new items. Now, here's also the other thing: OP items that we've already made. If you've already made the OP items, you're not gonna get that shit updated. If the developers get if the update if the developers update the Star OP items from last year to meet the current CR for this year, do not ever bitch about Daybreak. Don't you you have no footing. You have you you know what you can bitch about almost anything, but my comeback will always be, oh oh Daybreak did that, but did you not see what they did to those OP items? You got that shit for free, son. For free. They didn't have to update it. And honestly, in my eyes, they're not going to update it. They have no reason to. You're just going to have to play the re they have to play the content again to get the items, make it and have at thee. They're OP items. Do we should we see OP items gradually like you can update them to the current CR and everything? Eh, 
that's going to be kind of hard in my opinion because they honestly last for a few episodes before they really have to be removed or even replaced. But for us who already have the plans, update those plans to meet the current CR for the episode, and then and then it's done. Because the Starro event, if it was going to stay as an event, it would have stayed. Oh, uh, yeah, it would have stayed as an event. And we will have seen it return this year. And everything was already going to be increased. So the OP items in our R&D was going to be updated anyways. Or at least, I hope. I hope. But the items that have already been made, they're not going to. They're really not going to. That would just be, honestly, a loss of playtime and money on their end. Uh, There's no reason to gripe about time capsules. That's... That is a beating a dead horse, and that horse will never, ever, ever, ever go away. It's just not. United States government, good luck. <laughs> uh, so OP items are going to be one of the or going to be a conflicted issue when this goes on to test server because that's the first thing players are going to look at is pff, go straight to the OP items. Where are they? Are they part of the collection? Do we have to make them? What are they going to do? What are we going to do? And honestly, I hope we have to keep them at R&D. That's where they need to stay. It was an amazing experience, and I thank uh, the pe- the person who helped me finish out my uh, my Starro stuff uh, for those OP items, and it was great. It was absolutely great. It was a sense of accomplishment, much more than we get for than we get for everything else. But that's my hope that I stay in R&D. But what does that mean for any... Will we see any other OP items other than the Star of stuff? God, I hope not. We don't need that kind of... It was a, it was the face, utility belt, and the rings. So you basically had to make four OP items. I think we're good. I think we're good. That's going to be... We are solid. Solid. So we don't need anything else in that episode that has anything of inclination for an OP item. But again... Don't tie it to the collection, please. Just have all those three on the R- as R&D plans and, and done. They're good. They're good to go. Uh, next is going to be the soup, is the celebration. So this isn't part of an episode, okay? This isn't part of the episode. This is just a mere celebration. And I'm not sure if this is going to stay in the game or what. Uh, it's to me, it's still kind of, I don't know. Uh, so for Superman's 80th anniversary, yay! And of course, we get a little history. 80 years ago, in May of 1938, Superman first appeared in Action Comics number one. The world of comics would forever be the would never be the same because we introduced basically a fucking god, and all of today's massive cast of heroes and villains owe their inspiration to at least. In part to the Man of Steel. Rolling eyes. Over the years, there have been tremendous Superman storylines, but perhaps none stand out so clearly in our minds as the battle and death at the hands of Doomsday. For our part, DCO will celebrate Superman's 8th anniversary with content. With content. Our retelling of the death of Superman. Beginning in, in April. Just beginning in April, two months away. A series of content will and player gifts will tell that story. In our world, and with our heroes and villains playing their parts. This isn't an episode or an event or a seasonal. This is a celebration, and we invite everyone to come along for the ride. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> Yay, I'm, I'm driving. So, SJ's take. Doomsday is coming. A doomsday like you have never seen before. Please, please, please let it be a new graphic anything. I mean, the old one wasn't bad, but you know, just think, like, bump it up. Uh, like the Justice League has never seen. This monster is an unstoppable force. It may be that not even Superman can stop him this time. Can you? So, things to know. First off, this celebration will be a series of new free content additions available to all players. This content will retell or retell our version of the classic Death of Superman storyline in the world of DCO. New and returning Superman family characters will appear, appear, including Superman, Lois Lane, Doomsday, and more. 
The celebration will launch new player rewards, including new gear, styles, base items, and feats. Okay? And this will be coming on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One on April, or in April, for free. For free. No payment. None to be involved. Ooh. So Death of Superman was definitely one of the biggest hits to comic books and also proved that no character can ever stay dead. So we just saw Superman in Earth 3 and now we're about to see him fight off Doomsday in a couple of months. And of course, in Superman fashion, he will come back. But the question is, can we please get mullet Superman? I mean, come on. Come on. Mullet Superman is the best. Is the best. I want that. That's my hopes and dream. If we're gonna, Superman's going to come back willy-nilly after this whole thing, let's give him, uh, let's give him that mullet. Let's, get, let's give him what the people want. And the people want the mullet. Because you know, it's business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> but this is, like they said, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. So uh, what that content is going to involve, we won't know until we get into March. Uh, and even then, it's like, well, we have episode 31, like, we're, we're playing and I don't have time to test, but I'll make the time, as I always do. Uh, but... Like it says, there's new gear, styles, base items, and feats, so it feels... I mean, it's not an episode episode, but I mean, it definitely feels like one, right? So, uh, more information about the about episode 31 and Death of Superman will be coming about later this month as we get closer to a release date, especially as we get closer to March. Canadian Hockey Superman. Basically, Raph. Basically. Where's the Lantern content at? Yeah, exactly. Where is the Lantern content? Hey, Justice. And what about PS3? What about it? So, super psyched. Super psyched. It's going to be great. Um, February is definitely going to be something awesome. Awesome. And speaking of February, we have been told... That the game update 79 will be coming on Monday, February 5th. As going to be one busy ass Monday. Sadly, something happened that I'm not really sure what really brought about this. Uh, had to bring about the pushback because it wasn't really supposed to be on, fe on February 1st yesterday. But now it's going to be launching on February 5th. Yay! February 5th! Yay! So that's, so that's that is awesome. Very awesome. Uh, and it was also noted on the Twitter, and thank you to Jacob for posting it onto the Discord. Uh, it was posted uh, on DCS Twitter that the Valentine's Day event will extend to March 5th. It will be extending to March 5th. So we will have a full straight 30 days of playing the Valentine's Day event to get everything done. So, uh, what is all in Game Update 79 that makes it all the hype? Well, first up is Love Conquers All 2018. It's the Valentine's Day event. And this year, it's all the items and styles and everything and feats are based off of, di of a movie night. You know, movie date. Dinner and a movie. Not Netflix and chill. Not that, not, not, no. Not, never that. I mean, maybe Dex and chill. I don't know. Uh, so we have new feats, we have new base items and everything. Uh, I have a video of that on my YouTube channel. It might be a two hour and a half video, but that's okay because we were talking about some great stuff and showing it off. It's worth the wait. It's worth the time. Or you can go, if you go over to Tori Kumu over on his YouTube channel and you can see all the items that are coming from this year's Valentine's Day event. Uh, next, we're going to get an updated scorecard, which is great thank you cannot wait uh it's a new summary tab improved leaderboard improved info tab and two new track stats boss damage done 
and teammates rallied. So we can actually see the end of, so we can see how much damage we do on bosses. Now, the problem is with that boss damage done, it does not split between bosses. So if you are wanting to see how much damage you do on your bosses, uh, on each boss fight, you basically have to take your first, your first boss fight, look at the number, write it down, go to your next one, take that number, subtract it from the first, and there you go, and then move on to the third, and basically do the same, subtract that from the second boss, and all she wrote. So it is a little bit of work on your end to have to see your individual boss fight damage, but I feel I, we, I've, I've already recommended to the devs on the forums as well that it kind of needs to be tracked that way, but hopefully we'll see that kind of update later on. But what we have now, it's a good. It's a good. It is a good 2.0. It is scorecard 2.0, and it's going to look great. Next is going to be the auto sort feature for inventory. Shut it up. Uh, they've added a new auto sort button. Shut it up to the inventory menu. I don't care. Which, when selected, will reorganize all your inventory items by item type. I know. I know. I will work on it. I'm sorry. Uh, and then next is going to be the Elite Progress Points. They're going to remove the Progress Point requirements for all Elite content. We haven't had the Elite Progress Points in Episode 30, and it seemed to go off with a hitch. And so they're going to remove all of it from previous content. So go out there and complain, complain, complain that the content is too hard or too easy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, vendor Gear. This is a biggie, too. Hey, Dave. Uh, significantly reduce the cost for vendor gear items from all content up to and including Age of Justice. This change is related to our medium term plans outlined. Well, there was supposed to be a link there. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they're going to, uh, so all the content and all that, uh, all the vendor gears have all been decreased, uh, the, if I, the numbers I do remember was from Tier 1 to Tier 6, the gear costs, as a total, cost 91 marks at each tier. So if you want to get full Tier 6 gear, it's going to cost you 91 marks of victory. So it's going to be great. Don't forget the V-Day event date being announced, Trex. I, Jacob, I, I already did. It's, you know, March 5th. Full, full 30 days. Yeah. I got that, buddy. Uh, and then just some other fixes and everything that no one cares about. But, um... Oh! Uh, resolved an issue where the Star of 2017 OP items were scaling to the minimum item level when equipped. These will now be set to the original max item level. Uh, the rings were 170, the utility belt 172, and the mask is 174. So, that will be fixed as well. Yeah, the Valentine's Day event will last until March 5th. It's extended. It launches on February 5th, but then ends on the ends on March 5th. Full 30 days. Is that 30 days? I'm just guessing. But that's it. Those are all I got for new stuff. Uh, so February 5th is going to be the Game Update 79 bringing the Love Conquerors all updated scorecard, Auto Sort, a whole bunch of greatness. So far, I was really impressed with Game Update 78 in January, bringing a lot of power changes. Really great. But now with, Feb but now with Game Update 79, with bringing in a new scorecard, new auto sort for inventory, all this great shit. Holy crap, I am all, I am, this is so far my favorite update. It's my favorite update. Can March's update, whatever it may be, can that be the best one? Can it be better game update 79? Probably not, but you know what? I'll wait. I'll wait. Jacob, I, I said that when I was talking about the fit when I talked about it. Come on, Jacob, listen. But all right. And yeah, so people for my hands, uh, it's scabbing up pretty well. Swelling's going down. So. Probably will probably go still see the doctor probably sometime next week. No problem, Dave. No problem. All right. Let's go play some VG games. Can I close this now? Because no one cares.